Good. Okay, welcome back. This is the third lecture on Frege's sense and reference. In the first lecture, we have seen the identity puzzle asking what is the relation between a sign and its reference. In the second lecture, we have seen its solution that is a sign refers to its object through its sense or meaning. So, the sense mediates between the sign and its reference. So, a sign connotes its sense and denotes its reference. In today's lecture, we will look into the further consequences of this theory. Let us put forward by Frege himself. And we know that the reference of a sign is its object. The term morning star refers to Venus, the object. And the term pen refers to this object. So, reference of a sign, a word or a group of word or a phrase that's, that becomes a sign and its reference is the object. But what about the reference of a proposition? That's what we are going to look into first. What's the reference of a proposition? The pen is blue. It's blue ink. The pen is blue colored. So, what's the reference of this sentence? The pen, there is a reference. Blue colored, there is a reference. But when I say the pen is blue colored, what's the reference? Now, for Frege, he explains that the object to which the sentence refers is either which is true or that which is false. When I say the pen is blue colored, it is either true or it is false. I will explain it a bit more. Hence, according to Frege, the reference of a sentence is its truth value. Now you have to think of it. When I say the pen is blue in color, there is a reference to that pen and there is a reference to blue color. But what is the reference to that statement or proposition? The proposition is either true or false as we have seen earlier in case of more. The proposition is either true or false. Now, the condition that makes the proposition true is the state of this pen present. So, either the proposition is true because of the state of this pen or the proposition is false because of the state of this pen. Maybe there may not be a pen. So, actually what the proposition refers to is the truth condition of that proposition. And that truth condition is either that the pen is blue or it is not blue. Now, the truth condition that the pen is blue is true. Once again, what the proposition refers to is the truth condition. And in the present case, the truth condition is true. So, the referent of this proposition is true. So, for Frege, the reference of the proposition is its truth value. It is not an object, but the condition which makes the proposition true or false is the reference of a proposition. The truth value of a statement is not determined by the mode of presentation of its reference, but by the reference itself. In mode of presentation, we have seen that one and the same object can be referred through different means, through different signs. Now, whatever the mode of presentation be, let the mode of presentation be anything, what makes the proposition true or false is the state of that object. So, truth value of a sentence is not determined by the mode of presentation, how you express it, but about the reference itself, how the reference exists. If the pen is blue, then it is true. If not, it is false. So, it does not have any relation with the mode of presentation. And this I will explain once more using the notion of substitution principles. Okay. Now, you know that in symbolic logic, if an argument is given, now remove any statement from that argument 
and replace it with another statement having the same truth value. Then the whole argument is not going to alter. Or take a case of a proposition. The roses are red or rose is red and violets are blue. It's a conjunction statement. Rose is red and violets are blue. We know that rose is red is true and violets are blue is also true. So the conjunction rose is red and violets are blue is a true statement. It's a conjunction statement and it's true. Now if I replace the violets are blue with another statement which is having same truth value. Violets are blue is true. Another statement having the same truth value that the pen is blue. Now if I utter the statement again, rose is red and pen is blue. That's also true. Means the substitution principle what it claims that in a statement, in a compound statement, if you substitute one statement with another statement having the same truth value, then the whole truth value of the whole statement is not going to alter. Substitution principle, if a term within a sentence is replaced by another term having the same sense, then the truth value of the statement is preserved. In the same way, you can replace a term with another term having the same sense. Now, for example, if I say that the pen is not having any ink and I replace the not having any ink by empty. So the pen is empty. Both gives the same meaning. The truth value of the st statement does not alter. So that's the substitution principle. It's applicable in case of complex proposition as well as in case of simple proposition in which you replace one term with another term. So instead of having no ink, I'm using empty. The pen is having no ink and the pen is empty. Both are having the same truth value. If the pen is empty, both are true. If the pen is not empty, both are false. So that's what the substitution principle says. Now, if the truth values of two statements are different, then they both cannot have the same reference. Now, if the truth value of one statement and the truth value of another statement, if they differs, then they cannot refer to same object because the truth value of the proposition is that object itself. So if the truth value differs, then, the, then they cannot be one and the same object. Then the object must also differ. So that's what forget says that if the truth values of two statements are different, then they both cannot have the same reference. This is about the reference of a proposition. Now, coming to what forget calls the proposition attitude puzzle or sense and reference in indirect discourse. Okay, we'll take the example that George, a person George, believes that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn is the novel and Mark Twain is the author. So George believes that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. It's a true statement that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn is true. So another name for Mark Twain is Samuel Clemens. His true name is Samuel Clemens. His pen name is Mark Twain. Now, George believes that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. Now it's true that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. And it's also true that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. So, now think of the substitution principle. We are replacing that George believes that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn with another sentence having the same sense that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. So, according to substitution principle, the truth value cannot change. I think you are getting it. George believes that. What he believes? That Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. So, Samuel Clemens is Mark Twain. So, it has got the same meaning as George believes that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. We are replacing, according to substitution principle, we are replacing a term, Mark Twain, with another term having the same sense, Samuel Clemens. So, the truth value should not change. But think of it, is that the case? If George is not knowing that Mark Twain is Samuel Clemens, then George can believe that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn, but George may not be believing that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. So that's in indirect discourse. Mark Twain and Samuel Clemens have the same reference, like Morning Star and the Evening Star. But 
A can be true while B remains false. As I told, George can believe that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn without believing that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn. The reason may be George may not be knowing that Mark Twain is Samuel Clemens. So, the two statements are not identical. Substitution principle fails here. The statement A and the statement B are not identical statements. They are not referring to one and the same object. And the substitution principle fails here. So, what is the problem here that we are all going to explore? Okay. Substitutability works only with truth functional compound statements. And you know the truth functional compound statements. The truth functional compound statement is the statement in which the truth value of the component statement determines the truth value of the whole statement. That rose is red and vowels are blue is a compound statement whose truth value is determined by the truth values of rose is red and also the truth value of vowels are blue. And you do it using a truth table. You find out the truth value of conjunctive statements using truth table. And for the truth value of the whole statement, each component statement contributes to through their truth values. So such statements are called truth functional statements. But the statement George believes that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn or Samuel Clements wrote Huckleberry Finn are not truth functional. They are not truth functional statement in the way a conjunction or disjunction or something like that. Okay. In indirect discourse like this, the propositional attitude ascriptions A and B, the customary sense of expressions becomes reference. Now, what George believes becomes the reference. So, reference is not that whether Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn or Samuel Clements wrote Huckleberry Finn. That's a fact. Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn or Samuel Clements wrote Huckleberry Finn is the fact. It's a reality. But the reference of that belief is the statement itself. What George believes? He believes that that statement. That is Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. And does it force George to believe that Samuel Clements wrote Huckleberry Finn? No. That's another statement. So, George believes in one statement. So, the customary sense of that expression is the reference. George believes that dash 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 is about the relation between George and a proposition. That is this dash dash dash. The sense of the sentence fills, out the, fills the blank. This is. George believes what? George believes this. What is written here. So, the object of belief or the reference of belief is not the actual writing of Huckleberry Finn, but that sentence. Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn. It's a, that sentence is the object of belief, not the fact in the outside world, but the sentence itself is the reference of that belief. So, the problem is solved like that. Okay. So, it's not about the relation between George and Mark Twain or Samuel Clemens. The statement that George believes that Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn and George believes that Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn is not about the relation between George and Mark Twain or Samuel Clemens, but it's Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn and Samuel Clemens wrote Huckleberry Finn are different propositions. And this is not about the relation between George and Mark, Mark Twain or Huckleberry Finn, but it's about the relation between George and this sentence and also about this sentence. So, this sentence or this proposition is different from this proposition. Because here Mark Twain is a name and here Samuel Clemens is another name. So, this can be about two different people. So, these are two propositions. So, these are two different propositions and these propositions are the object of George's beliefs. So, these are two different statements in which one may be true and the other may be false. So, one can substitute one for the other in indirect discourse such as George believes that such and such. Okay, since there are two different propositions, you cannot substitute one with the other. Now, we will sum up the whole story about sense and reference. Initially, we have seen that identity is neither a relation between signs nor that between objects. In both the cases, the cognitive value is lost. 
So we have taken a step forward and claimed that it's neither the relation between signs nor that between objects. The sense of a sign is its mode of presentation. The sign, there is a mode of presentation, that is a sense, and the mode of presentation determines its reference. And also, sense is not a subjective idea. Sense is not what you have in your mind when you speak of that sign or when you see the sign. A proper name expresses or connotes its sense and refers or denotes its object. Two functions of a proper name or sign. That is connotation and denotation. And the reference of a sentence is its truth value. So for a sign, there is an object which is referent and for a sentence, it is the truth value which is its reference. And the reference of a subordinate clause in that discourse is its sense. In indirect discourse, the sense is its reference, not the object. Now we have seen that a proposition has got a sense and it refers to an object. In case of indirect discourse, the reference is not the object but the sense itself. Now, what are the benefits of this whole theory on sense and reference? It saves the indiscernibility of identicals. That is the theory of Leibniz which says that two identical things cannot be separated. Now, in case of identity puzzle, Frege utilized this principle and explains the restrictions of substitutability that you cannot substitute something in uh, indirect discourse and also explains how true identities can be informative that it is neither the relation between signs nor that of objects but it has got a cognitive value and all these things are the contribution of Frege's article on sense and reference. Now, in the next class, we will see about Frege's another article that is on the concept and object. Till then, bye. Thank you.